Did you know there's actually a liking gap between two people who talk to each other for the first time? Psychology research has shown that when you get two strangers and have them have a conversation for the first time ever, both people walk away thinking the other person liked them less than they actually did. So when you walk away from a conversation with a total stranger, yet it's a person that you want to befriend, and you walk away thinking, oh, what if I said this? Like, oh, so awkward, oh, so weird. There's a good chance that's all in your head, and that person actually likes you more than you think they do. It's also important that when you go Go talk to a stranger that you just assume that they like you in almost a delusional, almost cocky kind of way. Because research has shown that when you go into a conversation assuming that a person likes you versus going into a conversation assuming that a person doesn't like you, you actually create a self-fulfilling prophecy. A self-fulfilling prophecy is simply when you believe something or have some sort of expectation in your mind that then unconsciously, without you knowing, changes how you behave, changes your actions, and then actually manifests that thing or that belief or that expectation to become true. Now just imagine yourself in a situation where you're talking to a peer for the first time, someone you want to be friends with. What are some things that could happen in a conversation that would lead to you two being friends? First of all, people are more likely to be friends with those they perceive as similar to them, so you'll probably highlight some similar interests, some common ground. And although you may disagree on stupid things, you'll tend to agree more on core beliefs that you have. Maybe you'll be more aligned the same way religiously or politically, or maybe you think the same about life or what you want from this life. Any Anything sort of deep, you'll tend to agree on. And of course, we all know that two people who are friends or close friends, best friends even, are going to be people who self-disclose a lot. They say a lot of things personal to them. They tell the other person a lot about their secrets and a lot about their deepest, darkest thoughts. And that self-disclosure is mutual. That's what makes that strong friendship bond exist in the first place. Well, this research showed that people who actually went into conversations assuming the other person already liked them tended to disagree less, show less dissimilarity, and self-disclosed more. This research established a clear significant relationship between assuming that you're going to be liked by the other person or assuming that you already are liked by them and actually being liked by that person. Having the right mindset is super helpful, but it only helps as much as you actually act on it. And social hierarchies form fast. In other words, who's seen as cool and who's seen as a loser and wherever else you fall on the social status ladder happens very quickly and it tends to, after being formed, stay that way for a long time. Now, obviously this doesn't mean you have to be the coolest person or the person with the most social status, that doesn't make any sense. I definitely wasn't, and I bet you could tell that immediately through the camera. <laughs> it's not about being at the top of the social ladder, that really doesn't matter. It's really about not being at the bottom. So what do you actually do to make friends effortlessly? Well, first of all, just show up to stuff. Just be around people. This is something I talked about two videos ago, but I'll touch on it briefly here, and it's called the mere exposure effect. And it basically boils down to the more you show up and the more you're physically in the presence of other people, the more you're around them, the more they will like you. Humans like familiarity, and as really weird as this sounds, the more your face is around them, the more familiar your presence is to them, the more they will like you. It's that simple, just show up to stuff. Wherever the people are, just show up to where the people are, and just hang out. If you're going to a new school, or new university, or new job, just join a club, or an intramural sports, or something, anything that they have. You're forced to show up every week, and when you do show up, people are going to like you more, you can easily build friendships that way, and you don't even have to do much of the heavy lifting. You just have to show up. That, that's it. Again, I said this in the other video, but if you think about it, most of the friends or relationships you have now or ever have was because you showed up to the same place at the same time for an extended period of time over and over until eventually you're like, all right, might as well talk to you. You're kind of cool. And whether that was a class or you, your desk is next to them at work, it didn't matter. You just kept showing up to the same places and then you became friends with them. Just do the same thing here. Join the club, join the organization, just keep showing up. Now you have the right mindset, you're in the right location, and now it's time for you to initiate a conversation. At a certain point, you can only read about riding a bicycle for so long. At, at some point or another, if you actually want to ride a bicycle, you're just gonna have to try to ride the bicycle. And it might go well, It might you might fall off, but you get back up and you try riding again, and eventually you figure it out. Having the right mindset can help a ton, but at some point you just have to talk to another person. Which for some people, I mean, they get a high off that. They love talking to these other people, and for other people, that is the most terrifying thing in the world. Just approaching a stranger, and just what, like saying hi, like that's just so awkward. But the people who are thinking like this, who may be a little more introverted, I want you to think about the other relationships in your life, the other friendships you have, or even family members. The first time you met most of these people, unless it was something crazy, you're not gonna remember exactly what was said. You have no idea what that conversation was even like. And you should keep that in mind when you introduce yourself to someone else. It might feel awkward, but keep in mind the liking gap. That person will likely walk away liking you more than you think they will. Now, after introducing yourself, it's important to know what to say next. And I think the biggest key in conversations with someone you don't know is to just 
ask questions. Let them express themselves. People love talking about themselves, especially if they can talk about themselves and what they feel is a judgmental free environment. You know, people love talking about themselves. They love it. Just, just ask them questions. Don't make it an interrogation. Don't just only be asking questions. Make sure to say things yourself. Just by thinking about what type of question you can ask and just literally listening to them talk and then asking questions about themselves, people can go on forever about themselves. That's the one topic on planet earth they are an expert on. The most important thing I'll leave you with is this. If you are going to a university, let's say, or a situation where everyone is new to each other, it's not just you're the new person, it's everyone is new. Lean on that fact. Lean on the idea that they don't know how introverted or extroverted you are. You might have come from a place where you're the top dog. You might have come from a place where you have a ton of, like they, they have no idea. No one knows who you are. No one knows each other. And if you really hate, you hate going out and talking to strangers, you hate talking to new people, you only have to do this for a week or two, maybe. After a couple weeks, that awkward stage will be over and that social hierarchy will be formed. And if you've gone out of your way to introduce yourself to others, it's over. It's game over. You don't have to do that ever again if you don't want to. And I know talking to a stranger sounds crazy. I mean, People are generally stressed about this or worried about this, but research shows they're actually more worried about talking to a stranger than they really should be. People often don't like talking to strangers because they're like, well, I might not like this person. They might suck. They might be a horrible person and I could just be on social media or texting my friends that I know I do like. Or maybe you don't like talking to strangers because you're not confident in your ability to hold a conversation or start a conversation with a stranger. But almost every single piece of psychology literature out there where they take people and they have them talk to strangers and before they talk talk to the stranger, they give them some survey and they say, are you anxious about this? Da, 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 da. And everyone talks about all these fears. And then after they talk to the stranger, they say, well, how was that like? And every single time these people come back, they're like, that wasn't as bad as I thought. My fears were way higher than they should have been. It's all in your head. We humans naturally catastrophize into the worst case scenario. And when people do talk to a stranger, there's often this mood boost, a positive affect reported after talking to people, after just a brief interaction with the stranger, a brief conversation, almost every human being the planet walked away from the conversation, assuming the conversation was at least decently pleasant, in a better mood, a more generous, positive, happy mood. <laughs>